Hello, people of the world. Welcome to our home. Hey, Mia. We're in a new house. And of course, welcome back to another video. I know it has been a while. I honestly feel like I say that in most videos now. Sorry. Anyway, today we are gonna show you guys our entire new house setup. Why we have done things the way we have done them. Because, you know, having birds in houses, you kind of learn how to kind of bird proof in a weird way. Welcome to our new lounge. Now, just to touch on a couple of things, why did we leave London? Honestly, some of you guys know we were actually in a buy country home a little while ago, but that actually fell through. So we figured let's rent this beautiful place for a while, see if we can enjoy the country life, and see where life takes us. But we're still close to London. We are in Harlington Dunstable. And the coolest thing about being here, not only is it a tiny village of 2,000 people, but it's so peaceful, so quiet, and so clean. But we have two of our dearest friends, literally a four minute walk or a 30 second drive up the road, Carly and Dan, who have Shelby the McCaw, are literally like our neighbors, which is incredible. And we've been literally hanging out since we got here. It's been so much fun. We used to visit them for fly days, and when we saw this place up for rent, we thought, honestly, let's just do it. Now moving in general is pretty crazy, but moving with birds is even crazier. Luckily, sweet Dan, he is very sweet, he rolled up in this massive Luton van to give us a hand. We loaded up the entire Avery, all of our stuff. Yeah, we did have a lot of stuff. We actually made a couple more panels as we doubled the size of the Avery, which we are going to show you guys super, super soon. And the Avery was literally like the first thing we had to kind of set up because trying to move in a whole house of stuff with birds climbing all over you never really works well. But we're going to show you how we've set up stuff and why we've set up stuff. Honestly, moving out of our old place, the amount of fixing and cleaning we had to do was insane. The walls themselves behind their Avery, behind anywhere we put perches, absolutely covered in muck. I don't know what it is. Is it poop? Is it bird food? Is it vomit? Who knows? It just looks like a student dorm room. It was ridiculous. But we literally spent a whole week fixing up holes, painting the place, scrubbing. It was crazy. And I remember class Ivan Rose, who have Rocket, they literally walked up into that room the day we were moving out and walked in and said, wow, this looks like a brand new place. You wouldn't even know it was the same room. It was crazy. It was that different. But that's enough chat for now. Let's give you guys a tour in a bit more detail. Now, let's just start with this lounge, shall we? It may just look like a normal lounge. Well, maybe not to like normal people, but normalish bird people. But the floating perches. Everyone on Instagram, you guys have been going nuts about these floating perches and asking how we did it, why we did it. And there is so many, many reasons, isn't there, Mia? Yes, there is. You like your floating perches. Yeah. Firstly, having perches on tripods on the floor, yeah, it does work, but it is such a mess. The amount of floor space it takes up, say you have a perch here, it's going all the way down, it's spreading out, it is taking up room. Why do that? With stuff like tripods and Java stands, you're consistently moving them, you're consistently cleaning around them, and scrubbing the poles and stuff themselves. They're awkward to get through doorways, it just wasn't going to be something we wanted to do in this place. So, we did this. Everything above ground. Now you wouldn't believe how easy this thing is to clean. Sweeping under it, not moving a single thing is so much easier. We got the Secura cups with the bowls that basically clip on and off. Now these things we have sworn by since day one with birds. Secura cups all the way. I will never ever choose another bowl for birds. We've obviously modified them, cut the ends off, drilled some holes, screwed them on. But let's chat about the specifics of how this beauty was designed. Now, you may notice on the walls, we have aircraft grade Perspex. Does it really need to be aircraft grade? Maybe, maybe not. But that's what we have today. Our friend Sweet Dan, who builds planes for a living, actually waited for his manager to fall asleep one day and then stole the Perspex out of the air flight window room and brought it into our home because Mikey and Mia's comfort and our comfort of cleaning walls is much more important. Now attaching these, again, all bird safe wood. Now this bit here went on first. Now as you can see, it's got quite a decent little chunk here. So this here, Naturally, if you just hold that there, that was going to stay there. Now, weight management was a big thing when it came to putting these up. 
and we found really cool creative bits of wood to actually make this work. And there's no crazy way to put this up. We literally drilled a hole, put a plug in, put a screw in, straight through, nice and easy, super solid. And then we got the rest basically balancing kind of on them. This one's attached to that. Again, we got a nice little chunk coming out of that end as well. I don't know how we found these incredible bits of wood, but we're very happy about it. And this one here, we basically cut into a little V. So this here is actually kind of balancing on it. Every single surface is flat as well. That is basically screwed onto the walls. We are very, very happy with this. And honestly, the birds absolutely love it. And that's what really counts. And why do we have Perspex, you ask? Well, you saw how filthy those walls were. And do you have any idea how easy this is to clean? It's basically glass. The best invention ever for behind any kind of bird walls. Now, moving on to the windowsill perch right behind me over here. Now, this is an absolute gem. They love it more than anything. Now, this is where they preen in the morning, they preen in the evening, they have their cuddles. They love to look out the window. I think all birds just love to look out the windows. This here wasn't as tidy and a well thought out job as the floating perches over here. We just basically slammed a couple of screws in and it worked well. A couple of things that we did think about though. Now, it may just look like a piece of wood that's screwed in between two bits of a window inside sill thing. But if you look, we got the height right here. Now we could have put this lower, but why didn't we? They're tails! That's right, they're tails. Their beautiful tails are very, very long. So we wanted to have room for their tails. Now you may ask, why didn't you move it inwards? To the very very corner. Now the reason of the depth, so it's not too far forward and too far back, is so they can sit this way and they can sit the other way while looking out the window. Also another reason we kept it at this height, obviously there's these door handles and the keys here and if any of you guys do have birds out there you know they love to chew and break anything in sight. I mean this here is pretty solid, it is steel but there is little bits of plastic which they could have grabbed so keeping it out of peak reach is always very important. And you may ask about the poop, as everyone always does. We have this beautiful, trusty rug, mat type blanket thing. This is basically just your average poo catcher. Um, you can get them from any poo catcher shop and it catches any beads, it catches any poop, it catches any food or any kind of meat shells that splatters. There's a beautiful little crest right here, which is between the couch and the windowsill and it works amazing. And if you haven't noticed, this entire lounge is cable free. Those of you with birds will know they do like to destroy everything and there is nothing more annoying than plugging in your iPhone, plugging in your laptop, and there is a big hole in the cable. But what we have done, if you look around this entire room, not a single cable in sight anywhere. Any types of charges behind the couch with cables running through the cushions. We got our subwoofer under the couch, so the TV cables are in the wall. We've learned from experience. And welcome to our kitchen. It is a lovely place to do kitchen things. Now, this isn't overly a bird focused area. I mean, there is three drawers here dedicated just for birds. We got Drawer number one with their incredible new diet. Yep, we're actually getting off pellets pretty soon as off, well, kind of now. And we're moving on to like a full on dry mix. A lot of free dry stuff, a lot of flowers, a lot of herbs, different kind of seeds. We basically made this whole kind of crazy tub of goodness and they are loving it. It's a whole lot more nutritious for them. It's a whole lot better for them. And the variety is insane. Like 35 ingredients in this thing, it's crazy. So. One draw for that. Then we have another draw with their 10 kilos of walnuts. You know what they say, a walnut a day does keep the vet away. And then we have a third draw just for kind of random other bird stuff because there's always random bird stuff. The cool thing about this kitchen though is we have never actually used kitchens before. Um, we kind of used to live like students when we were in house shares. It was a bit weird. Like we barely ever used to cook. But now we live in a village where there's extremely limited takeaways. It's extremely hard to get food super fast. So we've had to kind of learn. I mean, last year alone, we had Uber Eats 174 times. That's just Uber Eats. That's not counting Deliveroo or Just Eat. So who knows, we might even be healthier now. You guys bored in the kitchen yet? Should we go check out the Avery? This is gonna be a good one. Now, as we venture upstairs, this is actually a three bedroom house and it's got a super badass attic. Now, 
We're not too sure exactly what we're going to be doing with this attic as of yet. Maybe a filming room, maybe a cheeky poker room. Suggestions are welcome. Now out of the three bedrooms, we obviously gave ourselves the nice big one. It's got delicious carpet, it's got nice white walls, it's got an ensuite. We love it and it's actually, for the very first time in our lives, a bird free room. That's right, it's nice, it's clean, it's tidy. We want to keep it that way. The only times the birds do go in there is if they do want to shower in either my ensuite or sometimes they use Mummy Human's bathroom. And then out of the other two rooms, one was smaller, one was larger. Of course we gave the larger one to the birds. The small one we turned into a little office, which Mummy Human and myself can work from home. It's cozy, it's sweet, it's great. So let's check out the Avery, shall we? Welcome to Mikey and Mia's Avery. Now for those who remember the old Avery, it was literally this, but just half the size. All we had to do was add two more panels, one on each side, and a couple of roof ones, and it literally doubled. Best thing we have ever done. Now the majority of these panels are actually made by fine mesh metals. These silver ones back here we actually made from scratch to allow the extension. Now setting up this Avery was literally the first thing we had to do when we unloaded that truck. Dan and I actually got in here straight away. We started laying the Proplex all over the floor, which also actually had to lead up to the walls. Remember how I mentioned all that poop splatter earlier? And so far, it's actually looking pretty good. We may add a few more perches, but we're liking the kind of open vibe of it. You know, we don't want to clutter it too much. We want them to have kind of room to fly from a perch to a perch if they want to, even though they just spend half their days climbing around it anyway. Now, with double the size of the Avery, obviously there is double the cleaning. For those who do know birds, they have extremely sensitive respiratory systems. They also produce a lot of dust, a lot of poop, a lot of sawdust from chewing all these birds around. So literally cleaning every single day. We sweep, we wipe, we vacuum. We cannot have them living in filth. But that's not all guys. So Mike and Mia's entertainment, we actually mounted a 43 inch flat screen to the wall. Is this overkill? Yeah, it might be. But we figured, even when we are working from home, even though we don't actually do super long hours, which is great, it's nice for them to have their favorite shows playing, to have a little bit of sound in here, just so they're not sitting in complete dead silence. Their favorite shows usually rotate between kids cartoons, rainforest music kind of shows, ocean noises, and birds chirping. They love all of the above. And up above here, we have a little camera. That way we can watch them, you know, see if they've been good. And right behind over here, it is a bit tight. They have their very own air purifier, keeping their lungs nice and purified and clean. And for all of these lines over here, well, if you guys have watched our old videos, you know exactly what they are, which is exactly what we're gonna show you next. So come along. And boys and girls, the time you have been waiting for, yes, we always save the best for last, our lovely, lovely garden. Now, this is about double the size of what we had in the old house. We're looking around 10 meters by nine meters. Now, this is nowhere near done at all. Like, we're like 30% into finishing this off, but it's coming along. We got the net up. Now we only just put this up and we've been here around maybe six weeks now. The first maybe the like three weeks or so we just rolled without a net. It was fine. Mia is always perfect. I mean, she's cheeky at times, but she's not as exploratory as Mikey can be. So the first few weeks, they just chilled. They hung out on fences, they flew around, they hung out on people's roofs. They kind of did what they want. Like I said earlier, it's a village of 2,000 people. It's pretty relaxed here. There's no kind of crazy high rises that they can get to. There's no big trucks that are driving past or London buses or anything crazy like that. But the thing is, there was the odd occasion where they would just take off and we weren't too sure where they were. And I think two or three days out of the week, we would be around screaming Mikey and Mia in the neighborhood. So we thought, you know what? It's probably easier and safer just in case they do land in a house with some vicious dogs, some evil cats that try and take a swipe at them. Now for this net, for anyone wanting to know how to do it, like literally this is just garden netting off eBay. So easy, so cheap as well. We ordered like 14 by 14 meters to get the overhang and the height and it was like 60, 70 quid. It wasn't too bad at all for what we got. It's still obviously not done. As you can see, we still need to get up to the top, tidy all those areas up. We need to build a gate as well as we're not really too sure how the net is gonna end yet, but we're gonna figure that out in time. Which is I think why it's taken us so long to actually make this video because we thought, let's make the house perfect. Let's get the net set up. Let's get the garden done and then we'll shoot it. But let's just show you what we've done so far and then you can see the progress in future video. Now, the way we did this, we stapled it all down the sides. We ended up running out of net here so we had to add a little bit more on. Attached it all the way to the roof. 
length because obviously we wanted this as high as possible. I mean, we're over five meters up over there and we're about two and a half on this end. So this set is high. These guys have room here. To hold it up to avoid any kind of slack because I absolutely hate slack. We literally threw sticks with fishing line attached to it from the front of the house all the way to the back. Now, I would show you guys footage of this, but I also don't want to give away too much about the street and the houses around us. Like I said, it's a village, it's small. And in their old place, there was about seven or eight of you that thought it would be quite fun to go on Google Images and try and find our house just from the look of the outside. So we're not going to risk that this time. Day one of putting this up was so much fun. We had Paul and Kaylee who have Flo and Flex. We had Rachel and Iago come down. We had Carly and Dan help us out. Honestly, it was such a fun day. Everyone was just really helping out, which is what we love about this bird community. People who help each other. And now we're just ripping stuff off, readjusting stuff, getting those finishing touches, so it is 100% perfect. Once the gate's up, once the roof's tidied up, we are gonna build the most epic jungle gym. These right here are made out of three mil steel. They are super solid. We're literally gonna hang trees from here to here to here. This entire area is gonna be a bird jungle gym. It is super, super exciting. And then over here, we can relax and enjoy our whiskeys while the birds stay in their own little corner, staying out of our whiskeys. Village life is honestly something we are so stoked about. You walk down the street in London, people have got their heads down, they're on their phones, they're in a rush. People here, you think they just stop and say hi? No, they stop and have a chat. It is crazy. People are just so open and homely and friendly. Like when we moved in, people were bringing us bottles of wine. The neighbors all love the birds. And that was honestly one of our biggest worries. Obviously this house isn't fully isolated. There's still people around. No one here is close as what it was in London, but everyone around here has just been so lovely. Back in the first few weeks, there'd be neighbors coming around saying your birds are my roof or in my backyard. And we're like, no, yeah, they're fine. They'll come home soon. So, so far so good. Stay tuned for the summer guys. Cause honestly the bird parties we are going to throw here are going to be next level. In regards to everyone who has questions about the new diet, we are actually going to be touching on this on a separate video. We actually recently had a really cool chat with Dr. Jason Crean, who is a biologist, avian expert when it does come to diet. He knows this stuff through and through, which is why we're basically getting them off pellets. But for now, before we do wrap up, thank you guys for watching. Also a massive, massive thank you to Carly and Dan for helping us with this entire move. Dan, you went over and above with the perches and the aviary and the net. I don't know how we would have done that without you. They have Shelby the Macaw and their new rescue Tommy. Definitely go check them out. Amazing people, amazing content too. For all those that have inquired about the meet and greets we are doing, yeah, you can still book them, mikeyamia.co.uk. They are gonna be hosted around here now, but for everyone who has them booked in London, we will still travel there for you. That's all for now, guys. We're gonna take these guys out for a fly with our local crew, so we'll leave you with a cinematic epic. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.